Hello. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. So it's time to um, to begin another week in another session. So we are going to start with a uh, week number two, and we are going to uh, start with session number five. So uh, we are going to start with this new week, and we have a lot of topics that we are going to develop in this week and. We have two um, topics for this uh, day. So we are going to start because um, they are not like very long topics, but um, we are going to read a little information about those uh, topics that we are going to develop. So we are going to uh, start sharing the screen because we have here our document in which we are going to read all the information that we are going to um, learn in this session. So here we have the, I think this is the first one. Yes, I need to move this document to the new, new, new the new uh, topics that we are going to develop. So here we are. We have the phrase that we are uh, going to read for this uh, beginning of, uh, of, of this week. So it says, with love and patience, nothing is impossible. With love and patience, nothing is impossible. So. We need love for the things that we are uh, doing in our daily life. And also we need patience to uh, realize all of the things that we are going to do for our future. So if we have love and patience, we are going to do all the things that we want for our future. So now for this day, we have the topic number one, that is the indirect questions. We're going to talk about this kind of questions. It is not like we are going to use verb to be or all of the verbs and we are going to create a positive, negative and all of the things. We are going to change something in the base of the questions um, to ask polite question. In this case, the uh, a specific word for this um, uh, for this topic is the polite way to ask for information. So in this case, we are going to uh, know how to uh, create this kind of question in which we are going to talk with people that we don't know, or maybe people that we uh, find in the street. And we need some uh, information for them because we need to find some places in a city. So we are going to know how to create this kind of questions and how to ask um, this kind of question to people. So we have the objective here and it says, uh, learn how to ask and answer in direct question in English. In this lesson, practice using in direct question by discussing a city or new destination. By the end of this class, you will be able to form polite indirect questions such as, and we have some example. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the nearest ATM is? Can you tell me how often the buses run? You know where I can catch the bus? This lesson will help you seek information using polite and grammatically correct English. Así que para comenzar la semana eh, en esta sesión que vamos a iniciar, 
Vamos a hablar de las eh, preguntas indirectas. In this case, it's indirect questions. Que las utilizamos para hacer eh, o oh, hacer preguntas de una manera más. Eh, how can we say it? Um, más respetuosa. That's the, the word. So, this kind of question is for that purpose. We are going to create this kind of questions to sound more polite because we are talking uh, with people that we don't know. Or maybe we don't have the, um, the security to talk with those uh, people, right? So, we are going to start with the information because the first part is the information. Then we are going to see the examples and how to differentiate um, the indirect question with the direct question, because we are going to see uh, the difference between them. And then we are going to create some questions uh, with the information that we have. And then we have the other topic that we are going to develop next or in some minutes. So we are going to begin with the information that we have. We are going to move this one and we have here. So for this part, we are going to write an example of a conversation. We are going to see uh, the way in which they are talking. So we are going to look at this example. We are going to mark the conversation like this. So we have me, we have two people in this uh, conversation, me and person in the street. Why we are using a person in the street? Because we need to have information for a place and we are uh, asking for a direction or something like that in the street. So me and I said, Excuse me. Could you tell me? Where the nearest station is? And we have the person in the street. And that person said, certainly it's along that road on the right. And I said, thank you. And do you know if there is a supermarket near, near here? And the person uh, answer me. Yes, there is one next to the station. And I said, Thank you very much for your help. So here we have the conversation. And if you can see some uh, specific elements for this conversation that make, um, make it particular, uh, because we are talking about 
the polite way to ask for something. So if you can see, we are going to mark the question or the indirect question that we are going to uh, divide or develop in this topic. And we have here, and it says this one, we are going to mark this one. Could you tell me where the nearest station is? This one is an indirect question. And also we have this one. Do you know if there is a supermarket near here? We have two uh, indirect questions. So one thing that we need to mark with this kind of question is the way in which we are talking. In this case, we are uh, talking in a very, very polite way because uh, we don't have the, uh, I don't feel like uh, secure to talk with that people because in that case, like in the conversation, I don't know this person. Si se fijan en la, eh, en la conversación, nos encontramos con una persona en el camino, en la calle, y yo necesito información. ¿Qué hago yo para poder preguntarle a esta persona y obtener información? I have to act like very polite. Tengo que ser muy respetuoso, muy amable para preguntar, para poder generar confianza. Porque si yo llego y le pregunto, Hey, hello, where is the station? Maybe that a uh, person will think, hmm, what's the matter with this girl, with this boy? And maybe they can say, I don't know, because they don't want to give that information uh, to someone that is unpolite. Because it is not like we are respecting uh, the people. So in this case, the indirect questions um, help us to gain information from people. And also it's for um, showing that we are acting like very polite. So in this case, we are going to know how to create this kind of questions. And we are going to read some information for this kind of situation. Uh, because it is not like, like very long information. It's not very complicated to understand and to apply this kind of question. But there are, um, they are very, very important that we can ask in this kind of way because we are going to sound polite with other people. And this will help us to um, meet new people in this case because we are going to establish a conversation with those uh, person in the street or even in the supermarket and the hospital, wherever we are. So we are going to uh, read some information about uh, this kind of question. So it says that uh, we use the indirect questions when we are asking for help in the street. This is very important. We use indirect when we are asking for help in the street. So this is very important because we, when we need help, uh, maybe a direction, um, where is uh, some place, or where is the station, um, the hours, or something like that, we can use these kind of questions. Because they are very polite. In the other question, I start with a phrase like, and we have some examples. So we have here that the indirect question start with a phrase like, could you tell me? 
Another one is, do you know? And we have two examples. Let's see. We have a direct question and an indirect question. We are going to see the difference. We have this one that is the direct question. And it says, where is the bank? Where is the bank? And we have the other one that is the indirect question. And it says, could you tell me? Where the bank is? Could you tell me where the bank is? So in this case, we have that the indirect question is kind of long. And the direct question is very short. But in that case, it sounds very heavy, right? Where is the bank? Where is the bank? And I feel like I don't want to answer that question to the people that uh, it's near to me or next to me asking that kind of question because it sounds very unpolite. But in the case that we have the indirect question, could you tell me where the bank is? Podría decirme dónde está el banco? Y en la otra es, ¿dónde está el banco? Sí, pesado, ¿verdad? Sin, sin pedirlo por favor. Entonces tenemos dos frases. Could you tell me? Podría decirme. Or do you know? Sabes dónde está el banco? We have two kind of uh, sentences that we can use to create this kind of indirect question. But we have like the base. We have a, a base question that we can use to create the indirect question, like in this example. Because we have the question that it says, where is the bank? And then we can transform that question to an indirect question, adding, could you tell me where the bank is? So it says that in the indirect question, we put the verb is after the subject. In this case, we have this one in red. We are going to mark this one in red is the subject. So we are going to write the verb after the subject. Don't know what is like that. Okay. So in this case, we are going to add the verb at the end or after the subject. And in the same way as we do with a normal positive sentence, the bank is over there, but in the indirect or the direct question, we put the verb is before the subject that is the bank. This is called inversion. We can call this um, way to write the sentence, we can call it like inversion. La llamamos inversión, ¿verdad? Cuando vamos a poner el verbo, en este caso el verbo to be, después de nuestro sujeto, así como lo tenemos en nuestra oración o nuestro ejemplo, que va al final, ¿verdad? O después de lo que es el sujeto. And it is used to make direct question in many verse tense in English, but we don't use inversion in indirect question. This is very similar to the grammar or reporter question. También tenemos el ejemplo de las reporter questions, que es como eh, transformar la información, parafrasear y dar una nueva versión de la información que ya tenemos. Um, we use indirect question in a different way from reporter question. Indirect questions are a way of being polite. They are very, very common in English especially when we are talking with someone that we don't know. 
that is very, very um, common uh, when we are meeting someone for the first time. So let's continue. And it says, yes, no question. So we are going to create yes, no questions. So we need to know how to create them. So it says to make to make an indirect question, we use if we're going to use if and the word order of a normal passive sentence. So in this case, to create this kind of question, that is the yes, no question, we are going to use if, but then we are going to use the same uh, word order that we are going to use for a positive sentence. So it says that in this case, this is the same as the reporter yes or no questions. On the other hand, we don't usually need to backshift, that means to change the tense of the verb as we do with reporter question. In this case, it is not necessary to change the, um, the tense of the verb, because in this case, we are not um, going to change that because we are talking in the same time. Most tenses may question by using inversion, that is the changing of the word order, and to change from a direct just no question with inversion to an un direct question, you need to add if. Si queremos cambiar una pregunta de directa a indirecta, lo que vamos a hacer es utilizar if. And change the word order back to a normal positive sentence. Vamos a cambiar eso, ¿verdad? Vamos a agregarle if y también vamos a cambiar lo que es el orden de la oración. Va a ser una oración normal, como una oración positiva va a llevar ese mismo orden. No vamos a hacer el cambio como lo haríamos con una eh, pregunta directa. So, we are going to see some examples of this information to make it clear. Para hacerlo más entendible, vamos a hacer unos ejemplos por acá. So, we are going to insert this one. And we have three. Well, 14, like this, because we are going to see the uh, tenses and the examples of direct and indirect questions. We are going to see the same examples in two different kind of uh, situation. So we have in the first one, verb tense. Vamos a ver los tiempos, verdad, de los verbos. Y cómo hacer preguntas directas e indirectas. So, we have here, direct question. And then we have here, indirect question. So, we have the first one, and it's present simple with B. Present simple with B. And we have the direct question, and it says, is he a Spanish? It's a simple, simple question, but it is unpolite. So we are going to transform this question and we can use the, um, the present simple in this case. Can you tell me if he is a Spanish? So it's very different, right? Is he a Spanish? And then can you tell me if he is Spanish? 
es español y la indirect question me podría decir si él es español es una diferencia muy grande en las preguntas next one present continuous and we have the question is the restaurant closing now Closing now. And we have the uh, indirect question. Can you tell me if the restaurant is closing now? El restaurante está cerrando ahora o podría decirme si el restaurante está cerrando ahora. When we are using the present continuous, we are using the ing form of the verb. So in that case, this verb is changing the tense because we are using gerund or ing form of the verb. So that, that's why we are using the present continuous. So we have another one. N is past simple with B. Past simple with B. And we have the question. Was he late for the meeting? And we have the indirect question. Can you tell me if he was late for the meeting? We have another one. As continues. Were you watching TV at 2 p.m.? Can you tell me if you were watching TV? At 3 p.m. Then present perfect. And we have the example. Has Lucy been to Mexico? If Lucy has been to Mexico. Present perfect continues. Has she been living here alone? Then we have past perfect. We have the question, has she found this job when she moved here?
Can we transform this question to, can you tell me? We have the phone. When she moved here. Then we have past perfect continuous. And we have the question. Has she been living here alone when she met you? And then we add, can you tell me if she had been living here alone when she met you? Then we are almost done with the instructors. Then we have Future simple with will. And we have here, will she start her new job next week? And we are going to create this one. Can you tell me if she um, will start her new job next week? Future simple, we're going to. It is going to rain later. Then we have, can you tell me if it is going to rain later? And we have three more. Future continuous. Then we have future perfect. And the last one is future perfect continuous. And we have the question here, and it says, will Lisa be meeting the boss later? And we have here, can you tell me if Lisa will be meeting the boss later. Will he have finished? The report by tonight. Can you tell me? If he will have finish uh, 
Hi, tonight. And the last one. Will he have been? Study Jean. French. For 20 years. When he retires. And we create the other one that says, can you tell me? So in this uh, table, we have a lot of tenses um, in which we can uh, create this kind of a uh, question. So we have a lot of tenses here and we are going to have uh, this structure because we know that for uh, each one, we have a specific structure. So in this case, it's like an example of all the tenses that we have and um, what kind of question we can create. But if you can see that in the case of the indirect question, because we are using, can you tell me if, that is the beginning of all of the question. So that is, I'm sorry, the base for our questions. And then we uh, add the sentence, like we are creating a positive sentence. And in this case, um, the tense doesn't matter because we have the question. So, si ya tenemos una base de la pregunta, así como lo tenemos en este caso, que es una pregunta directa, nosotros, para crear nuestra pregunta indirecta en este caso, lo vamos a utilizar con esta parte. Can you tell me if... That is the first part that we are going to use in every question that we are going to create. Si decíamos que íbamos a utilizar el could, el could you tell me o do you know, sí lo vamos a utilizar también, pero en este caso estamos hablando de can you tell me, es en presente. Estamos haciendo una pregunta utilizando el present. So, that is the beginning. Can you tell me if El if nos da la pauta a nosotros también para hacer como la transición de una pregunta a otra. So, tenemos la pregunta indirecta. He is, can you tell me if he is Spanish? ¿Qué vamos a hacer en este caso? We are not going to use this same uh, structure. Or in this case, we can say we are not going to use the same order of the words. So we have, if is he is Spanish, but in this case that we are going to create an indirect question, we are going to change the verb to be. And then we are going to create like a, a positive sentence. He is Spanish. That is the change. In ese caso, cuando ya estemos hablando de las preguntas indirectas, como obviamente el verbo to be no es el que nos va a ayudar a nosotros a crear la pregunta, Ya no necesitamos poner primero el verbo to be y luego el, el, uh, el subject, sino que vamos a hacer como que estuviéramos creando una oración positiva en cualquiera de los tiempos que lo estemos haciendo. So, can you tell me if he is Spanish? Can you tell me if the restaurant is closing now? Can you tell me if he was late for the meeting? It's the same question, but with some changes. Solo le vamos a agregar la frase de can you tell me if y luego la misma pregunta solo la transformamos a una oración positiva and that's it. We have the question that we are going to use to ask this kind of polite question. Eso es todo lo que vamos a hacer. No necesitamos más. There's no question with tenses that use do, does, or did Sometimes you want to make an indirect question using the present simple 
of any verb except B or the past simple of any verb except B. Distance make direct question by using do, does, or did. When we want to make indirect yes, no question, uh, we are going to use if. And we don't need do, does, or did. En este caso no vamos a utilizar el do, does, or did si utilizamos el if. WH question in the same way as we reported W question, we use the question word and the word order of a normal passive sentence to make indirect WH question. Lo mismo pasa con las preguntas con WH eh, words, WH words. Eh, vamos a crear lo que es eh, la palabra con la oración, como que si estuviéramos hablando de una oración positiva. So, then it says, to change a direct question to an indirect question for tenses that make question using inversion, you just add if and change the word order back to normal positive sentence. Simplemente agregamos el if y ya sabemos que tenemos que cambiar el orden de las eh, palabras para crear una oración positiva y ya tenemos nuestra indirect question. So, one common problem with this kind of question, it says that it can be difficult to remember to put the verb after the subject, especially when the indirect question is in the present simple tense of B. For example, we need to say, could you tell me where the station is? Not could you tell me where is the station? Or could you tell me where is the station? So in some cases, it is necessary that we are going to use the verb to be after the subject. And it can be very hard for us to remember to write the uh, verb to be in the correct form. But in this case, uh, it's just to practice this kind of direct or indirect question. So, um, then we are going to let the indirect question in that uh, space, and now we are going to talk about the other topic. Um, es un poco con, eh, confuso, verdad, el uso de los direct and indirect questions, porque tenemos que hacer algunos cambios y eh, eso. But um, if you can practice asking indirect question, it will be very, very easy to understand the uses of this kind of question. So remember that if you, um, if you are going to ask for information or for help in the street, you need to use this kind of uh, question because they are very, very polite. So now we are going to start with topic number two for tonight. And we have adjectives and nouns. This is a different topic because we are going to talk about um, uh, adjectives. And also we are going to talk about nouns. And we are going to uh, talk about the difference between uh, the different kind of adjectives and the uses that we can uh, have for them. So the objective says that build your English language skill with this lesson on adjectives and nouns. By the end of this class, you will learn how to express your opinion about houses and apartments. Additional, you will be able to describe your house or apartment in English and use evaluating phrases such as, apartments are too small for pets, houses are too expensive, and houses cost too much money. So in this topic, it's a, one of these um, very dynamic topic because in this case, we are going to use adjective. And you know that the adjectives are word that can uh, help us um, describe things, people, and animals. So in this case, we are going to remember what are the adjectives, how many adjectives do we have, um, what kind of words that we can use to describe a specific thing, in this case, houses. So uh, for this topic, we are going to um, create vocabulary. So we are going to create a vocabulary about adjectives that we can use to talk about our houses. And then 
uh, I will tell you something about uh, tomorrow. Um, tomorrow we are going to describe different houses. I will um, show you different kind of houses and you are going to use the adjectives that we are going to um, learn today. I think if we have time, I, I think we have like 20 minutes. We are going to see. So we are going to create this kind of vocabulary about um, houses and then we are going to practice talking about the houses uh, uh, using the adjectives and also the nouns, but in this case are the adjectives the main topic. So, mañana vamos a hacer una práctica oral donde vamos a describir diferentes tipos de casas e incluso vamos a describir nuestra propia casa. So, vamos a crear vocabulario que tenga que ver eh, con ese tema. En este caso, adjetivos que tengan que ver con las casas. Pero primero vamos a entender qué son los adjetivos. And then we are going to create the vocabulary for this uh, topic. So, first, we are going to um, have some information or a specific information about adjectives. Because we are going to make a little review. So, adjectives. Let me do this something kind of like this. So first, what is an adjective? That is the question. What is an adjective? And we have some kind of information. And it says, an adjective is a word that modifies a noun or pronoun to make the sentence clearer and more specific. Adjective answer the following question. What kind, how many, and which one? So, So we have that this kind of words can modify nouns and pronouns. And why they modify nouns and pronouns? Because they give more information about uh, these specific things. For example, I have a noun. Uh, maybe I have the word dog. Dog is a noun. And I want to say um, more things about the dog. And it says the dog is fluffy, is short, is black, and I am giving information about that uh, word. And in that case, it's modifying the information that I have for that dog. So those kind of words are the adjectives, right? The, the ones that give me more information about a thing or a person, or even an animal. So. Adjective usage. Vamos a ver los, los usos de los adjetivos. First. First, first, first. We have, if an adjective is placed after the noun or pronoun, it modifies, it follows the form to be.
So let's see an example. He was always forgetful. So in this case, we have this one, and we're going to mark this forgetful. And we have the explanation and it says, here the adjective forgetful modifies the pronoun he. So forgetful, and we are talking about who? He. So in that case, we are modifying he. It doesn't matter in this case, uh, the distance between the noun and the adjective. We already know that um, that adjective is modifying that noun. Because in that um, sentence, we just have one uh, subject. Tenemos solo un sujeto y ya sabemos que ese adjetivo está modificando ese sujeto que tenemos ahí. So in this case, um, the adjective is after the noun. In este caso, nuestro adjetivo está después del nombre. Then we have another one. And it says adjectives can also follow sense or appearance So I think this is the, the most common kind of adjectives in which we describe a sense or appearance. And we have a, verbs like look, taste, smell, feel, and sound. Mirar, probar, oler, sentir, y el sonido, ¿verdad? O escuchar. So in that case, we have this kind of adjective that describe or modify this kind of verbs. So we have the example. And it says, the night air from the ocean is smell crisp. The night air from the ocean So in this case, the, um, the meaning of this one or the structure of this one says, here the adjective Chris modifies the, uh, the hair. So in this case, this one, Chris, is modifying this one, this word here. So in this case, it says that it can be a, this kind of adjective that can describe something that we can feel in this case is uh, something that we can smell, that we can perceive through the nose. And it says, the night hair from the ocean is smell crisp. And we can translate it like, um, 
fresco, vigorizante, limpio. Those are the meanings for crisp. So in this case, this adjective is modifying the air. Está modificando lo que es el aire, cómo se siente, ¿verdad? Podemos dar una descripción de cómo lo percibimos a través de nuestros sentidos. And then we have another one. Here. And it says adjective can also be placed before the noun the modifier. And we have the example. And it says, the colorful sunset can be seen in the photograph. So we have here that the adjective colorful modifies the sunset. So in this case, um, if you can see, we have that uh, we can add the adjective after the noun that it modifies, but in this case, it can also be placed before the noun it modifies. Así que tenemos dos partes, ¿verdad? La primera es donde el adjetivo va después del nombre que está modificando, pero en este caso va antes del nombre que modifica. So we have here colorful sunset. Está modificando ese nombre y está antes de. ¿Es posible? Sí. Antes o después. Pero es dependiendo de la palabra que esté modificando. Um, so, tomorrow we are going to talk about the last part of the adjective that are the compound adjective, a, a series of adjectives in which we have different adjectives in one uh, sentence and proper comparative superlative adjectives. And then we are going to have the, um, the practice uh, about the houses. We are going to describe the houses because I will send to you tomorrow, uh, the hour of the class, the different images that you are going to describe. And I will send to the group of WhatsApp because it is um, very to have the image uh, in that place that is uh, presenting the image on the screen. So tomorrow we are going to have the exercise. We are going to talk about uh, the houses and how to describe them. So we are going to end the session here because uh, it's time because we are starting the classes five minutes um, after. Yeah. No, we are uh, starting the classes um, five minutes before the hour. So now we are going to end the session. So remember that tomorrow we are going to have the exercise in which you are going to describe houses and your own house. So have a good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.